Now, the rational plane are formed by agents of denudation. Previously, we have talked about denudation and their agents, such as rivers, wind, rain, glaciers, and their likes. These agents wear out the irregular surfaces of rock and smoothen them into blades. Where we initially had uh, outcrops, outcrops of rocks based or due to the effect or action of these uh, agents of denudation, they are gradually smoothened, gradually removed or washed away to an extent where we have plates. And this is what we call erosional plate. Examples include the Canadian Shield, the Reg, and Hamada of Sahara Desert. Now, the last one, which is the depositional plane. The depositional plane is formed by a deposition of materials or sediment that are transported by various agents of transportation, such as wind, rivers, and um, running waters. Just like um, in the case of denudation, there is a washing away of the surface and a consequent smoothening of a surface to make a plane. In the positional plane, there is a gradual sedimentation or deposition of sediment to fill up probably areas where we have uh, uh, some depression so that it now becomes a plane. And these materials or materials that enhance this action are agents of transportation, as earlier mentioned, such as wind, uh, running water, and ice. Now, here is an illustration showing erosional plane by glacier. Glacier is one agent that can move uh, the materials. So, this is typical for glaciers. And the original planes are usually grouped into the following. We have a river, a river plain, we have the flood plains, we have the deltaic plains, we have the outwash plains, the Aeolian plains, the lacustrine plains, and finally we have the coastal plain. Now let's look at them one after the other. Alival plains are formed from the deposition of sediment that are eroded from the upper course of a river. Now, the flood plains, this one, in this case, they are formed from deposition of sediments that are carried by running water. Example, floods. When you have floods, there's high tendency for uh, sediments to be carried and deposited and over time this rise to what we call a flood plain. We have the tight plain. The tight plain are formed from the deposition of sediments that are brought down from a river onto the mouth of that river. Outwash plains are formed from the deposition of materials that are brought down by glaciers. Now, Aeolian plains. Aeolian plains are formed in arid or desert or semi-arid regions. As the name implies, Aeolia has to do with dry areas, desert or semi-arid regions where wind blows. As the wind blows, sand is carried and deposited to form extensive plains. The lacustrine plains is the next one. And this one are formed from a deposition of sediment which cover the beds of a lake that have become dry. Over time, when the lake becomes dry and there is a deposition of sediment, this gives rise to what we call a lacustrine plain. 
And finally, we have the coastal plain. Coastal plains are formed by the deposition of sediments that are brought by ocean waves onto the continental shelf. And these plains are usually rich in uh, very important minerals, as we will consider shortly the importance of plains. One is that they are good for human habitation or settlement. Because of the level nature of plains, it encourages human habitation or settlement. And some plains are rich in mineral resources like coal, petroleum, like I stated earlier. They are also fertile soils and they favor agricultural activities. Because of this transportation from different areas, minerals and other important nutrients for, that will support growth of plants are deposited, uh, transported and deposited in these areas. And as a result, they support agricultural activities because of the fertility, the high fertility of soils in those areas. Plains also favor the construction of roads, railways, airports, because they do not form uh, barriers to the construction of these networks or communication networks. And finally, as an important of plains, we have that rivers in plains provide water for drinking and transportation. Just like um, mountains with the advantages and disadvantages, plains also have their advantages which we have discussed and disadvantages that which we are about discussing now. And one of such disadvantages is that some plains may be flooded with water thus reducing human activities. These plains may also serve as good defense centers or rather they are not good defense centers because just like in the olden days as we mentioned earlier that mountains serve as defense where we have a plain there is no uh, means of defense by the plains. The place is just open and uh, you can easily face attack or ambush, ambushed by your enemies. But anyway, these are usually, or these were uh, very important in the olden days. And uh, finally, as a disadvantage of plains, is that some plains may be barren. The environment and its resources. Now, what do we mean by the environment? The environment may be referred to as everything around us. The living, the non-living things that surround us, even the physical and the non-physical things, they all make up the environment. Now, environment may be defined as a total surrounding of an organism in a given area and this includes the physical surroundings the climatic factors other living organisms in that surrounding so in short or in other words we can say that environment is living things and what surrounds them. There are types of environment. One, we have the physical environment. Physical environment includes physical factors like the soils, the climate, the water, relief, mountains, etc. The cultural environment also includes you know, it's a set of beliefs, customs, practices, 
behaviors that exist within a given population or a given people. Cultural environments shape the way an individual develops and also influences that individual's ideologies and personality. You look at a person, the way he thinks at times, the way he talks, intonation, is also a function of the cultural environment. All those things shape the individual to make him the way he is. That's what we call the cultural environment. And the social environment involves features like the schools, the churches, mosques, markets, and settlements. And there are domains or spheres of the environment. And these are the lithosphere, the hydrosphere, atmosphere, and biosphere. These four domains of the environment are interrelated and interdependent on each other. Importance of the environment. Now, this importance can also serve as the interaction or interrelationship between uh, these various domains of the environment. Because we have situations like or situations where plants and animals can be found in the lithosphere, also in the atmosphere and in the hydrosphere. The hydrosphere, like we said earlier, is the liquid part of the earth, whereas the atmosphere is the part of the earth that contains gases such as nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and other rare gases. And the lithosphere the solid part of the earth. Now, plants in the biosphere get their nutrients from the lithosphere. We explained that earlier. Most human activities mainly take place also on the lithosphere. We live, we settle, we interact, we go to school, we play, we teach, all on or in the lithosphere. And this of course, is one important of the environment to man. And the gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide are made constantly in the atmosphere.